One time I was on a very long flight and I decided I was going to learn a Nicki Minaj song. So I just replayed the song over and over again a thousand times, rapping mm-hmm. it to myself and writing down mm-hmm. the lyrics. Mm-hmm. And at the end of it, I knew the song. Um, I used to like to do this drinking at parties, like party trick. I know all mm-hmm. the words to this rap. Uh, and then I turn and turns out the two girls next to me were like watching me the whole time and like <laughs> – and like secretly roasting me. <laughs> and I've never been so embarrassed in my whole life. I had no one to the right of me because those two seats were empty. So I didn't know. Like I didn't even think that the people to the left of me were watching me the whole time. Oh, this one is for the boys in the booming system. Top down. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I still remember it. <laughs> um, I love that for you. But also, yeah. Erica, you should know, I think a lot of white girls had that exact experience because mm. the number of white girls I know who know every single word to that song. I'm like, all uh, y'all, yeah. all y'all must have done this. <laughs> no, I think maybe we did. And so I, I would, so. I would like call my friends up after drinking and leave them long voicemails just rapping. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a fun party trick. <laughs> it is a fun party trick. And by the way, that's a great song. It it is. There's simply it's simply no a great denying. song. It's, it's a great, great song. song. It's a fun yeah. song. But yes, I think the white women of 2008 or whatever For all got sure. together and decided. This yeah. is gonna be the one we no, were. they it's a hundred percent true. We we all sat on airplanes and we wrote down the lyrics <laughs> and we <laughs> oh, oh gosh. I hope those girls forget all about me. <laughs> uh, I hope I'm I hope I post this clip and they comment. They're like, it was us, we were there, we remember. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Two Queens, Two Crowns. I am your host, KJ Miller, founder, lecturer, and content creator. And I'm Erica Manganelli, pop culture humorist and content creator. And today on the show, we are talking about Megan Thee Stallion and Nicki Minaj. Speaking of, did you watch Megan's documentary on Amazon in her words? No, I didn't even know there was one. I'll have to watch that. It just came out this week, and that is actually what okay. inspired me to do this episode because I watched it, and first of all, I cried for like oh wow, almost all of it. Yeah, oh, it was no. it was a very moving documentary, mm-hmm. um, and also quite inspiring. And I feel like people are the people are talking, the streets are talking about Meg, and so they are. <laughs> it's a good time to have this episode. Um, I don't know how much you know about her and Nicki Minaj. I don't really, I was going to ask, do they get along? Because I don't really know too much about her. I do remember like the Megan Thee Stallion, like shooting incident or whatever, mm-hmm. but that's mm-hmm. really all I know about her. Mm-hmm. And I know that like, I used to be a Nicki Minaj fan back in the day and then it, it, my my fandom kind of trickled off a little <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah mm-hmm. all right well so there's going to be a lot to catch you up on so I'm okay <laughs> I'm excited about that and we will get into it right after this all right the time has come to get into Nicki Minaj and Megan the Stallion and it sounds like you're not you're not all that familiar with the two of them, their story, their link up, their beef, like none of it. You don't know any of oh it. Oh my gosh. No, I had no idea that I have beef. Oh. Uh, here's, here's the thing. I feel like Nicki Minaj, this is going to sound like probably mean, but I feel like she's got beef with everybody. And like, it's she kind of scares me a little. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does start to feel like she's got beef with everybody everybody mm-hmm. and um and you have good reason to be scared because her fans have been known to dox people oh her wow okay. fa- oh yeah that's mm-hmm. like that's like a big thing of theirs if you talk oh, wow. a little too much shit about Nicki Minaj her fans will come after you wow. so good there's there's reason to be scared and mm-hmm. by the way she does not as far as i've seen she does not discourage that i have yeah. yet to see her discourage some of the um more inappropriate behavior from her fans so yeah you know, I've, never, I've never seen her try to stop it <laughs> <laughs> in so fact getting- i feel like she jumps on the bandwagon <laughs> I mean, sometimes. So we are taking a little bit of a risk here. Tread lightly, I guess is what I'll say. (laughs) Tread. Mm -hmm. I I already plan to. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. We'll try and um, we'll try and stick to the facts here. But yes, I will. Let me bring you up to speed. Okay. Okay. So first of all, Meg, she enters what I would call mainstream public consciousness in 2019. So at this point, she's 24 years old because she was born in 1995, which 
I what know. a what a blow to me. <laughs> Just I, as, as someone born in, in 1985, that's a major blow to me. <laughs> yeah, I when I say the words like someone who I think of as an adult, when I say that they were born in the 90s or God forbid the 2000s, it just is like, what are we talking about? <laughs> what are we? <laughs> Couldn't agree more. <laughs> what? Like are that's a baby. <laughs> yeah. So she, but she's 24. She okay. bursts kind of into public consciousness because up until this point, she had spent the last couple of years basically rapping on Instagram. And so her freestyles would gain a lot of popularity. And come 2019, she coined a phrase that I'm sure you heard, which was hot girl summer. Oh, of course. Yes. You're familiar okay, with the phrase. Yes. But <laughs> I was not familiar with the fact that she like coined the phrase herself. I didn't know that. Yes, because okay. Meg is the hot girl and she called her fans hotties. So this was this was Meg's whole persona. And so come 2019, she coins the phrase hot girl summer. And it's a song that she's working on when she ends up being invited to hop on Instagram live with Nicki Minaj. Okay. So, so, so Nikki sees her and is like, let's do a live together type thing. Yes. Yeah, so Nikki had heard Nikki was familiar basically with Meg, like okay. saw her kind of on the come up, had heard some of her mixtapes, knew of her. And Nikki's on IG live one summer evening in July, 2019. And Meg joins the live at first, just as someone watching the live, she's just watching. She's just like, Hey girl, I love you. And Nikki actually invites her to join the live. So now the, both of them are on screen. Mm -hmm. And I actually went back and watched a little bit of it. And, it, you know, I couldn't watch the whole thing. First of all, it's 40 minutes long. Second of all, long you know how IG lives, there's no real programming. So it's a yeah. lot of <laughs> yeah. random chit chat. I was not about to watch all that, but I did watch some of it and it was very lovey dovey. They were heaping praise on one another. Meg, Meg was saying like, you're the goat. You're greatest of all time. Like give Nikki her flowers. She was telling her I've been a fan since 08. And in 08, by the way, she was in eighth grade. <laughs> Just another blow. Oh, oh God. <laughs> eighth grade. In eighth grade. Okay. So eighth grade. And she was like, yeah, Nikki Minaj. Like, yes. why well, didn't even know? <laughs> Like, yes, she okay. was in love with Nikki and she's telling her all this. And meanwhile, Nikki is saying props to you. I'm so proud of what you're achieving. And also Nikki um, congratulates her on her education because at this point, Megan is still in school. So she ends up graduating in 2021 from college. She went to Texas Southern University. But anyway, she's still in school at this point in 2019. And Nikki says to her, uh, my only regret is that I never got to go to college. She's like, so I love higher education. And that's actually true. I've seen Nikki has sponsored students going through school, like scholarships. Like she's actually quite big on, on, on education. So mm -hmm. this whole thing, it's a love fest and it culminates with Megan talking about her new song, hot girl summer, and basically insinuating that she would love for Nikki to join the song and come one month later, they dropped the song together. It's uh, okay. Megan Thee Stallion featuring Nicki Minaj and Ty Dolla Sign. So do you know that song? I think I do. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure you do. Yeah. I want to play just a little bit of it to remind our audience. Because when I, I, I did know it at the time, but to be honest with you, I haven't heard it in so long. I kind of forget how it goes. All right. So I think you get the gist. Did that ring bells know. for you? No, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was a totally different song. <laughs> okay, so you did not know that song at no, all. No, but it does make me go like I always love a Nikki verse. Like they're mm -hmm. always they're always really like boppy, catchy. I don't know. I like it. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. If there's one thing Nikki is gonna do, it's if she hops on a feature, ninety nine times out of a hundred, it's gonna be fantastic. And I For think sure. that was a really great feature and just a fun song, you know, just a mm -hmm. fun summer bop. Um, but what I think is really notable about it, particularly for our story, is that this is really how Megan burst onto mainstream consciousness. Like she had been rapping mm -hmm. before then. She definitely had fans before then. But in terms of, I would say, like middle America, knowing mm -hmm. who she was, it really was this moment in 2019. And I think it's really significant that Nicki Minaj was a part of that moment because Nicki Minaj at this moment was, I mean... There's no other way to say it. The biggest female rapper 
in the world, sure. you know, mm-hmm. like hands down. Just so I'm, you know, being thorough, I will just name some of her, the sh- a very short list of some of her achievements up until this point, just so we're yeah. clear on like where these two were at this time. So while mm-hmm. Meg was new on the scene, quite young, still a student by this point, Nikki had achieved the largest album sales week of the 21st century among female rappers with her debut studio album, Pink Friday, and the second largest of all time after Lauryn Hill's miseducation of Lauryn Hill. So that's one sort of chip in her bag. In 2010, she became the first female solo artist to have seven songs on the Billboard Hot 100 simultaneously. Wow. Wow. In 2017, she broke the record for the most Hot 100 entries by a female artist, surpassing Aretha Franklin. Wow. In 2018, she became the first woman to accumulate 100 entries on the Hot 100. And she currently has the most number ones, top tens, and appearances on the Hot hot R&B hip hop charts. So she just... You know, bona fide, bona fide, legendary, yeah. greatest female rapper, so on and so forth. Super so, successful. Yeah, just just beyond. And so for mm-hmm. her to be on this song with Megan, I do think lent a ton of credibility to the very beginning of Megan's career. And it was, you know, mm-hmm. like we said, a fun moment, a fun song. Yeah, for sure. And if I know Nicki Minaj, she took full credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I don't know that I ever heard her take full credit. I think she, because she even went on to say after she did that IG live, she went on to talk about how organically that collab came together. She said, I heard the song and I love the song and I didn't even know if I was going to be featured on it. It just was more that like, I loved it enough that I started writing to it and, Mm -hmm. you know, and Meg wanted me to hop on it with her. Um, So I actually think in the beginning, you know, somewhat, somewhat surprisingly she was quite gracious she was quite gracious and uh it seemed like there was a genuine friendship there yeah unfortunately things did go south (laughs) when nikki's your friend she's your friend and when Mm -hmm. she's your enemy she's your worst enemy oh boy oh (laughs) boy yeah so now i will say Mm -hmm. in terms of why things went south the two of them are not in in agreement on this. And actually, and I didn't know this, to this day, Meg still says she does not know why things went south. She actually, Hmm. she did an interview with Billboard that came out in September of this year. Mm -hmm. And in the interview, they asked, is there a chance for reconciliation or even another collaboration one day with Nicki Minaj? Mm -hmm. And she replied, I still to this day don't know what the problem is. I don't even know what could be reconciled because to this day, I don't know what the problem is. So from her perspective, she's like, Things went south. I kind of believe but I don't know why. <laughs> I kind You're of like, I don't it. even I don't even know the story, but I believe Meg. You're like, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Things have just felt erratic in the last like two years ish, maybe maybe year. I don't even know mm-hmm. if you want to go two years deep. Like just different. Things have seemed different on Nikki's end. Mm-hmm. I, well, I don't know why. Yeah. Well, you know, we'll we'll get into it. But I will say okay. in terms of what started the beef. Meg says, I don't know, whereas Nikki says that it Mm -hmm. actually started because of an incident that happened sometime in 2020. She never gave us the full details around timing, Mm -hmm. but basically she says that Meg encouraged her to drink when she was possibly pregnant and also essentially insinuated if she was pregnant that she should have an abortion. So this is what Nikki said. Do you remember that oh. Nikki had a, a radio show on Apple Music? It was called Queen Radio. Okay. Yes. And uh-huh. and do you remember that she used to always get on there and spill the tea and talk a bunch of shit? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, was I do. As far as I, I remember, it would trend, and as soon as it would trend, yeah. I'd be like, "What'd she say?" Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Because at the time, I'm pretty sure I didn't have Apple Music. Like, however, you could listen to it. I, I, what for whatever reason, Same. I didn't listen. I couldn't um, listen, but yeah. I wanted to know. I was like reading all the tweets, like, "What's going oh. on?" A hundred percent. It always trended. She was always Mm -hmm. talking mad shit. Um, And so during one of those episodes, this is what she said. She said, 
Imagine telling someone you didn't want to drink because you were at the time possibly pregnant because you were actively ha having a baby. And imagine if that person said, oh, girl, you can go to the clinic and try to essentially force you to drink. Now, this is what Nicki Minaj says happened. OK, and so in her world, this is what started the beef. So that happens. The timeline is. That happened sometime in 2020. Remind you, reminder, they did their feature summer 2019. Okay. Sometime in 2020 when they're kicking it together, according to Nikki, Meg encourages her to drink when she's possibly pregnant and she does end up having a baby in 2020. Okay. Then in January 2021, Nikki unfollows Meg on Instagram. So mm. she's she's okay. really upset. Whatever, whatever it was that did happen, she's really upset. Mm -hmm. Then in May 2021, she releases a song called Seeing Green, and it includes this diss. And no one's certain at the time that this is a diss towards Megan. We don't know until later that this is a diss towards Megan. But the line is, one margarita pizza with Parmesan and garlic. These bitches thirsty. I can see why they alcoholics. And I'm not a rapper, so let's assume it sounded way better when she said it, okay? Um, but... <laughs> I won't even try it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, but somehow now we, the reason we then learn that this is a diss to Megan is because in September, 2021 is when she goes on queen radio and says that quote about someone trying to force her to drink. She clarifies. She clarifies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's in September and Meg tweets because someone tweets it out. Like someone tweets to Megan Meg, Nikki is accusing you of forcing her to drink and encouraging her to get an abortion. And Meg retweets it and says, lie. So she's like, this isn't, mm -hmm. this is not true. This never happened, basically. All okay. right. So that's mm -hmm. September 2021. Mm -hmm. Or sorry, that is September 2022. So okay. actually, it's a whole year later, later when Nikki comes out with this story. Mm -hmm. And then Nikki disses her again in 2023 on her song, Red Ruby to Sleaze. Do you recall mm -hmm. that song? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that song, mm -hmm. I kind of, I, I I feel like it- I feel I like it was it on actually, TikTok a bunch. It was on TikTok a bunch, and it That's may have actually even gone to number one. Mm -hmm. And anyway, she has a lyric in that song, 700 on them horses when we fixing to leave, but I don't fuck with horses since Christopher Reeves. And so everyone mm -hmm. interpreted that to also be a diss to Meg, because she's the stallion. She's talking right. about- I don't mm -hmm. fuck with horses. Yeah. And then another disc comes. Yeah, I was I have one in my head that I'm thinking about that I haven't mm -hmm. heard yet. <laughs> okay, it might be this one. It might be this yeah. one. So she has a song come out called Fuck the Club Up, where she says, Stay in your Tory Lanes, bitch. I'm not Iggy. Okay, yeah, that's what that's the one I was thinking about. That's I saw that one, one on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. So mm -hmm. we have basically in kind of quick succession, Nikki saying um, unfollowing her, then mm -hmm. dropping a diss and seeing green, then mm -hmm. talking about her on her radio show, then dropping another diss in red Ruby to sleaze, then dropping another diss in fuck the club up. And during this whole mm -hmm. time, Megan we've heard nothing from Megan. Megan is not, she's not taking the bait. She's just, you know, which I feel like is her thing, right? She doesn't really take the bait very often when there's yeah. beef. Because even during that like whole shooting beef thing, I feel like she really didn't get online and respond back to much of it. Well, and that's a very good point. And that is the subject mm -hmm. of a lot of the documentary because what you see in the documentary is, and, and first of all, let me just say, so it's very clear, I always believed Meg. I always yeah. knew she was telling the truth about Tory Lanez and what he did to her. Mm -hmm. He is a terrible person and I have no sympathy for him. And frankly, if he had to spend more than 10 years in jail. I'd be fine with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let me just yeah. say that for the record. And I never believe a man. So <laughs> I, I, just, I believe okay. her from the get. <laughs> from the jump. So mm -hmm. we just want to make sure every, all of our listeners know that. But in the documentary, they did show how there were so many people after she got shot and after this news came out, so many people mm -hmm. so quick to say they didn't believe her, say mm -hmm. that she was lying. And Tory Lanez himself was going on social media, calling her I a liar, insinuating really dark, terrible stuff in his music videos about her. Mm -hmm. So she was dealing with all of that. And it literally drove her to a mental breakdown, which they cover in the documentary. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can so see that. 
she's dealing with so much shit. And on top of that, Nicki Minaj is, is dissing her in these songs. And she, from her perspective, she's like, I don't know why. Like, we were cool. We did a collab. I called you the goat. I had nothing but respect for you. So she's just like, I don't know why this is happening. And then she finally does respond. So in January of this year, she comes out with her single, Hiss. Oh, okay. Now, do you recall this song? I don't think so. Okay. Maybe I heard if I heard it, you know, if you heard it. Okay. We're going to listen to some of it because right, let's listen. It's, <laughs> it's a doozy. You got you to gotta hear it. I love a diss track too, by the way. So this is very fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. Well, well, well. <laughs> I love a good diss track. That Chris Jenner line in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Fire. Mm -hmm. And I, just, caught, I caught that little Megan's Law in there. I caught that. Yes, that's the, I think exactly. that's the only reason why I know that song, actually, is because I yes. had to listen to it because of that line. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So first of all, the whole song goes so hard. And what mm -hmm. I love about that song going to number one is it really doesn't even have a hook. Like, no, it's just her rapping. It's just bar after bar after bar after bar. Which but I she, love. But the bars are so hard that yes. you're like, you want to listen again because you're like, oh, I'm, I have to, I have to figure out what, like, what yeah. you're talking about. I missed a few things. <laughs> I missed Very a few nice. things. It makes you want to keep listening. Mm -hmm. Um, but For yes, sure. as you just called out, one line in particular got the internet's attention very swiftly and got mm -hmm. Nicki Minaj's attention very swiftly mm -hmm. because she said, these hoes don't be mad at Megan. These hoes mad at Megan's law. And for those who don't know, mm -hmm. unpack it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared about it, but unpack it. I've been nervous since the episode started. <laughs> oh, no, we're these, doing this. We're doing it. I'm, ah. We're doing it. I'm going to unpack it. And I'm just stating facts. I would like to say for the internet, I'm not mm -hmm. stating anything that is not factual <laughs> here. Let me read exactly what it says on Wikipedia, okay? okay? Okay. Megan's Law is the name for a federal law in the United States requiring law enforcement authorities to make information available to the public regarding registered sex offenders. Now, mm -hmm. and the reason why this is relevant to Nicki Minaj is mm -hmm. because her husband, Kenneth Petty, mm -hmm. is a registered sex offender. Mm hmm and that is not a diss. Mm -mm. That is a fact. It's a, it is a fact. He was tried and um, found guilty of raping a minor mm -hmm. about 15 years ago. Yes. So it was widely assumed when Meg dropped that line, dropped mm -hmm. that bar about Megan's law that she was referring to Kenneth Petty, mm -hmm. Nicki Minaj's husband. And Nicki did not like that. Mm -hmm. No, 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 not mm -hmm. one no. bit. No, she didn't. No, she didn't. That was like, that was the drama that lasted, I would argue, days, maybe weeks <sighs> online. Uh, that was 100,000%. And to your point about, uh, Nicki Minaj potentially seeming a bit erratic. Mm -hmm. She, in the aftermath of this song dropping, mm -hmm. she got on IG Live for hours, hours. at a time. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of the night, we're talking 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., yes. she was on IG Live and kind of what felt like spiraling. From, an, from the outside looking in, it looked a little bit like a spiral. Yeah. It's never mm -hmm. been the same since, I would it, argue. Yeah. Yeah. And P there was a lot of speculation on exactly what was going on. There were some people speculating that drugs may have been involved. Now, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I don't know anything about that. that. What mm -hmm. I do know is she was on IG Live for hours at a time, late, late, mm -hmm. late at night, and sounding a little bit incoherent Yeah, and kind of going off and also kind of previewing some of the bars that she would eventually drop in her diss track, mm -hmm. Bigfoot. Now, and we're going to listen to that one too. Mm -hmm. But she would be on IG Live basically kind of dropping some of the bars. Like one of the bars is bad bitch. She likes six foot. I call her big foot. The bitch fell off. I said, get up on your good foot. Okay. I remember very specifically watching the clip from that live. And, and mm -hmm. it was almost like 
hard to understand what she was even talking about or that she was even rapping. It was like very confusing. Right. And yes, I agree because I remember watching a few clips as well because she wasn't speaking in full sentences. Right. And also a lot of the times she did not actually have the camera trained on her. Right. So she she had the camera trained on like the floor or the wall or the ceiling. Yeah. And, and then you would hear her just sort of like she big wouldn't say anything. Foot. Yeah. And she'd be like, big foot, bad bitch. She right. like, foot. Get up on your good foot. <laughs> That impression was so good. <laughs> but no, that's what it was really like. It was like, it, really was. it was like a little bit confusing what was happening. A hundred percent. And and for the people who sat up there and like kicked it with her for those hours, like y'all are, y'all are real yeah. fans. Because, and screen recorded for us all. like And screen recorded yeah. for us all because mm-hmm. I could not have sat through that. Oh my good God. Mm-hmm. So she, but she did that for multiple days at a time. And then. Yes. Three days later, after mm-hmm. being on IG Live and doing all this, then she actually drops the diss track, and it's called yeah. Bigfoot, and we're going to listen yeah. to it. Do you, do you remember it, by the way? I do, and I remember people being like, you should have saved this one. Like, there was mixed re- – it was, like, mixed reactions. Some people were like, this isn't it. It's not yeah. even very good. And then other people were like, that's right, the diehards. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, yeah. <laughs> and I remember listening to it after seeing the live clip and being like, yeah, I don't know if we should have done that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't yeah. know if we should have done that. Um, but what do I know? I'm not a I'm not a rapper. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. What do we know? Okay. Mm-hmm. We're not music critics. Mm-hmm. So maybe it was a masterpiece. We'll let the listeners be the judge. Let's I just agree. play let's play a little. Let's do it. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I could I could talk about this all day, this track. <laughs> because it's good, but also it's not at the same time. Like she's got well, the little one liners. The audio the is off. No, Something the- about the audio is off. That's the thing. Because she's Nicki Minaj, is she going to be able to come up with a few mm-hmm. strong bars? Absolutely. For but sure. as a as a song, no, this is not a good song. I, I, no. I defy anyone to, to, to tell me this is a good song. Mm-hmm. It is. And and it's also like, is it even a song? I mean, she spends the last half of it just talking. I had to cut it off. I was it's like, not okay, a girl. song. It's not a song. <laughs> it, it sounds like she literally took some of the clips from the live. Oh, she did. She mm-hmm. absolutely did. And that's the thing. I feel like all the good bars we heard because she either had already said them on live or she had mm-hmm. tweeted them because before she dropped the song, she was also tweeting a bunch. So she had, I'm pretty sure, tweeted the line about, wants to rap about Megan's Law for a free beat, you can hit Megan Raw. She had tweeted that line. So yeah. we had heard that. We had already already heard the line about, get up on your good foot. Like, so yeah, it just, it didn't <laughs> hit. That's S- simply said it's hard it, about it her happen. having kylie like let her hobble to the car oh, oh my gosh and yeah. then her going on and on about her dead mom i'm just like what right. is happening uh, here what is happening here yikes it just, we lost it the plot it didn't feel fun to listen to when you're no. rapping about somebody's dead mother which by oh, the way that was another part of the documentary that made me cry because her oh, mom no. was truly her best friend her mom was the one who managed her who put her on who drove her everywhere took her to everything so that she could like become this superstar and she lost her mom very suddenly and so i mean and it was part of what led to her mental breakdown so it also was just like "Mm, i don't Mm. see this is the the moment in time that Nicki minaj started to lose me I was like, I was all about Nicki Minaj. And then I heard that and I was like, oh. It just, it doesn't feel great, right? It doesn't feel good. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's it's not a fun diss. Like some of the disses are so fun. You're like, burn. Mm -hmm. (laughs) This one isn't. This one like hurts. Mm -hmm. Knowing everything you know about the timeline, knowing Mm -hmm. now what you know about what Nicki says happened and what Meg says, which is she doesn't really know what happened. Mm-hmm. And knowing now having listened to both of these songs back to back, I'm just mm-hmm. curious. What do you think was really driving this beef? And to the point that it got this far, do you think it was, as she said, potentially Megan encouraging mm-hmm. her to drink? Do you think it was some second thing? unknown thing like where what do you think Mm, i have a lot of thoughts about the first one is like maybe 
Megan said something in passing that she thought was funny, but like Nikki didn't really think it was funny, like in in regards to the abortion thing, mm-hmm. um, because I can't imagine anyone's friend who like, you know, for sure, 100 percent that you are pregnant is just being like, go to the clinic, you know, but like right. if you're like, I might be I mean, OK, a lot of people drink when they might be and haven't taken a test yet, you know, so mm-hmm. I can see that just being like a miscommunication where one Mm -hmm. person gets very, very upset and the other person is like, what? It was a joke, you know? But then the timeline makes me think there was another incident Mm -hmm. that happened that Mm -hmm. popped up that might have been bigger. Maybe they had a conversation about it and she was just like, it wasn't that serious. He took it Mm -hmm. too serious. Um, But I feel like with that last Nicki Minaj song, the crime doesn't fit the punishment or the punishment doesn't fit the crime. Mm -hmm. And that scenario, she just went too far. The last one went too far. That's my opinion yeah. with that. Yeah. And I, think? first of all, I agree with you on the, I could definitely see some conversation happening while they were out and about or, and Meg was drinking and um, yeah, Meg may be saying something jokingly like, oh girl, whatever, take this shot. You can always go to the clinic now. Is mm-hmm. that a thing I would joke about? No. No. But right, you yes. know, if you're, if you're but drunk. I can see and, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're drunk, you're drinking and you're just like, girl, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um. I could see that happening. I don't know if it did because Meg says it didn't happen at all, but I could see something right. jokingly being said that maybe at the time Nikki did not take as a joke because she was actively trying to have a baby or right. you know, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, so I agree with you. I could see that happening, but I'll tell you what, and this is pure speculation on my part, mm-hmm. but I'll tell you what I think happened. Okay. Okay. And this actually gets back to some of what we spoke about last season on the episode about Cardi B and Nicki Minaj. Mm-hmm. It just seems to me that for some reason, Nicki Minaj struggles with accolades and achievements and recognition happening for an artist, a fe- a, another female rapper, if it feels like not enough credit and recognition is also being given to her. Mm -hmm. There seems to be some sort of block around that for her Mm -hmm. where instead of just being happy, it, it, it turns into anger or, um, feeling slighted somehow. It definitely feels like that happened with Cardi B because they also Mm -hmm. started on pretty good terms. They were on Mm -hmm. a song together and Cardi B had, had been, had said publicly like, nothing but good things about Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj Mm -hmm. had said good things about her and then it flipped. Right. And, and also we've seen something similar happen with Lotto. Mm -hmm. We've seen something similar happen with, there was like a short beef, but a little bit of a beef. It seemed like with, um, ice spice. And so it just sort of feels like there is some kind of block with Nicki Minaj where at first she's, welcoming and excited about a female rapper and then it's almost like she struggles with their success a little bit and like I said this is purely speculation yeah I don't know glad you said it first (laughs) because I was thinking it the whole time and I and I'm scared (laughs) yeah well me too but it just feels Mm. like how do we keep ending up here yeah they're like the common denominator here is Nicki Minaj right like yeah. And 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 so what I think is number one here and here's here's sort of if I if I think about the timeline again. Mm-hmm. They do their song together in 2019. But what mm-hmm. happens in 2020? She hops on a song with Cardi B who at this point already has a beef with Nicki Minaj. Ooh, I didn't know that. Mhm. Yes, and that song goes to number 1. Okay? And she so that spirals about it at home. And I I don't think she loved mm-hmm. it. Now she yeah. didn't publicly say anything bad about it, but if I yeah. If I know Nikki, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I don't. <laughs> but yeah. if I, if and, I, I do, and I don't. Yeah. Um, I no, I agree. Like, I think she, uh-huh. at, at the very least, maybe she wasn't mad about it, but I don't think she loved it. Okay. Right. Number one. Number two, Meg hops up on a song with Beyonce. And that oh. song goes number one. Or actually, it's more, it's more accurate to say Beyonce hops up on Meg's song because it's her song and they do a remix together. Mm-hmm. That song goes to number one. And mm-hmm. Nicki Minaj and Beyonce used to be close. They've been on songs together. And mm-hmm. that relationship has also splintered. Okay. How do you so, splinter with Beyonce? How do you splinter <laughs> with Beyonce? 
mindset. Uh, I so don't know. These two things happen in relatively quick succession. And then, and this to me may have been the icing on the cake, mm-hmm. Nikki wins multiple Grammys at the 2021 Grammy Awards. And okay. Nicki Minaj has never won a Grammy. And she's been very clear that she feels very slighted by the industry. She feels like there's been a campaign against her. That is, you know, just the one achievement she she doesn't have yet. And she feels mm-hmm. like it's because she's been slighted and the industry holds things against her. Mm-hmm. And I think that one, two, three punch, the Cardi plus Beyonce plus Grammys, mm-hmm. I think I think that may have upset her. I think so too. Combined with the uh, massive amounts of hate she gets on the internet about her husband, I think it was like catastrophic. And and um, the re- and that's why I feel like she's dropping these disses in that mm-hmm. meantime. And meanwhile, because Meg is like, I don't know why any of this is happening. Plus, Meg is going through her own drama. Meg yeah. is staying silent on all of it, but. How, it, there's only so long I feel you can stay silent when someone is dissing yeah. you repeatedly. I agree. Um, I do like the silence tactic. I think more people need to take that approach. Mm-hmm. Um, it does make you look like the least problematic person in the equation. It <laughs> and it, ha- and it has here. It um, but I definitely, at the risk of getting people dragging me on the internet, I think that her husband has started her downfall uh, into her just spiraling on the internet mm-hmm. and and i don't like it for her and i like you i'm scared to say too much yeah but <laughs> we are treading as lightly as we oh, can. It's, i'm anxious about it <laughs> I'm, I'm anxious i am anxious mm-hmm. i i will just say you know, because I also was a big Nicki Minaj fan and I would say mm-hmm. I am still a fan of her music. Me I still too. think she is so incredibly talented, but she does make it hard to be a fan of her as a person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, she wouldn't be the first artist to suffer a little bit at the hands of the man she chooses to date. Yeah. Um, so, and I don't know I, much about him. Do you? No, I don't know anything about like him. He's I've not chosen, very public. I've chosen not to learn think. about him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. same. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like the little bit I know, I don't like. Yeah, I don't like, and it's enough. I don't need and to go any enough. further. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, and that's enough. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I I don't know. And maybe, listen, like I said, it's speculation, so maybe she didn't have an issue with any of that. Maybe she didn't have an issue with WAP. She didn't have an issue with the Beyonce feature. She didn't have an issue with Meg's Grammys. Maybe none of that bothered her. And it really did all come down to whatever the incident was and the phrase in the, you know, the conversation about her potentially being pregnant. Maybe it did. But to me, it just seems like, again, because we have these other instances where there is a good, at the very least, cordial relationship with a female rapper, and then it turns sour, I just feel like there's something that keeps her from being able to simply support another rapper who's doing yeah. well. It just yeah. That's just what it looks like at the very least. Didn't her and Cardi B, the little, a little off topic, but didn't her and Cardi B get in like a fist fight at an award show? Yes, they got in a physical oh. altercation. It was oh, at no. um, a Met Gala uh, mm-hmm. event. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I thought so. I just know. wasn't sure. I love Cardi B. I do too. But and Cardi B and Meg I'm a little love less scared. I'm less scared of her. Maybe that's it. <laughs> 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 yeah. I, I mean, Cardi B seems pretty real. And to me, Cardi and Meg, what I feel like they have in common is it, they they do not seem to go at people unprovoked. That's right. the thing. I don't mm-hmm. feel like Meg is out here dissing anybody unprovoked. And same mm-hmm. with Cardi. Like, Cardi waits until shots are fired. Right. And it just seems like mm-hmm. Nikki doesn't wait. <laughs> yeah. And more so now than I feel like it used to be for some reason. Or maybe that's just in my imagination. I don't know. But I, I recently just saw her on a live with Ray J about oh. the argument that Ray J got in with Diddy's kids. And he was like telling her the story hmm. and she stopped him mid story and was like, shush, I didn't ask you that. Shut up. I didn't ask you that. I don't care about that. And he was like, you don't care about how I, I made up with them. And like, we reconciled. She's like, no, I don't care about that. Give me the, give me the drama. I was like, oh, oh wow. Okay. <laughs> oh, even, I missed even that. he was even taken aback. He was like, mm-hmm. oh, <laughs> 
Go back wow. and watch it. Go back and watch I, it. I miss that entirely. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know. And the thing is, I feel like these two, and I guess this is transitioning a little bit into the queens helping queens of it all. Mm -hmm. I really feel like both of these women have helped each other and yeah. both of these women can help each other. And so it mm -hmm. is sad to me that there, first of all, that there is this beef, but second of all, that like, it seems like this is a thing Nikki is so committed to, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like she just, she's so committed to the, to the various beefs. And on the one hand, like you said, a rap mm. beef is fun. And part of yeah. rap is this like going back and forth. Diss tracks have always been a part of rap. So on the one hand, I think a part of this is just fun. Like it's okay for there to be rap beefs. The men do it all the time. So the women can do it okay. too. Mm -hmm. And if, if they're both getting something out of it, great. But to your point, it starts to feel like, is Nicki Minaj getting something out of it? Like it, mm. or, or is this, is there a bit of a spiral going on? And I don't know the answer, Yeah, but it seems just, like she gets really angry and then like holds a grudge and there's no moving forward. Yeah. And I, and I feel like if they could move forward, it would be good because like I said, I feel like they have helped each other and mm -hmm. they could continue to help each other. Like one way I will say just on the theme of Queens helping Queens that both of them help each other was with hot girl summer. I think that yeah. was such a good moment for both of them. It was obviously a good moment for Meg to have, you know, the biggest female rapper in the game beyond one of your first mainstream singles. Like, obviously that was good for her, but yeah. I think it was good for Nikki too, because like ultimately hot girl summer was like the meme of the summer. Like that was the yeah. phrase of the summer. Every, it, it was all you heard. Everybody in talked about it. Yeah. Everybody was talking mm -hmm. about it. So she got to be a part of that viral moment. So I feel like mm -hmm. they both definitely benefited from that. For and sure. In general, I would say even this beef is still helping both of them. I mean, yeah, Bar Barb's love the beef, like the, the Nicki Minaj yeah. fan. <laughs> and I'm not beef. gonna lie, sometimes I do too. I, I right. like the drama, yeah, yeah. So you know, I would say Nicki Minaj, her fans, they they love a beef and they they love to see it. And then on Meg's side, I don't know if she loves a beef, but she did have a quote in that Billboard interview that I had mentioned earlier where she said. If people feel like I'm somebody to aim at, then I must be pretty high up. If you're reaching up at me, mm -hmm. I must be some kind of competition. That makes me feel good. That makes me feel like I can rap because if okay. I wasn't the shit, y'all wouldn't be worried about me. Okay. Right? So yeah. See, and that's what I was thinking when you brought it up before is that I'm, I'm wondering if she likes doing these collabs with these rappers, but like she doesn't like when she feels like it becomes her competition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? And I, I, I get, but I just, maybe she just I, needs to tone it back a little. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I totally get it on a human level. For like sure. Feeling as if someone who maybe you, may, like in the beginning, yeah, you helped them. Yeah. You maybe even played kind of a mentor role. Mm -hmm. And now they're you're like, could they're, be bigger. Yeah. They yeah. have a Grammy. You don't. Right. By the way, which is also yeah. true for Cardi. Okay, see, I didn't think about that. It could be a lot of that. Could be a lot of that. It could, it could be, be a lot, lot of that. that. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think from from Meg's perspective, she's helped by all this because she's like, look, if I wasn't doing something right, these people wouldn't be aiming mm -hmm. for me. And from Nikki's perspective, she's helped by all of it because it's keeping her name out and about. And obviously her fans love to see it, love the disses, yeah. love all of that. So from that perspective, if it's helping and serving both of them and they're both happy with it, I'm happy for them. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, but I just, I don't know. I think because Nikki is so talented and it feels like there's always another beef and there's always someone else she's upset with, I just wonder like, is this good for your mental health? You know? Well, like yeah. <laughs> I was going to say that next because she seems upset and angry and it's like, well, we don't want that. Are you, are you holding on to it to where it's now harming you? Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So mm -hmm. if it lives, if it lives in a, a fun space, fun shade, mm -hmm. fun beef, we're all yeah. making our coins and dollars and we all get to do our interviews and we all get to keep our name in the press. And this is just a part of rap and a part of hip hop. Great. You know, right. like mm -hmm. almost like how a lot of the fights on Real Housewives, like they're real, but like they're not that important right you know like it's we're all here for the entertainment of it all for if sure that's where it's living 
God bless it. But it does sometimes feel like it's living in a bit of a darker space for Nikki. It does. And, mm-hmm. and that's where I sort of feel like it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. We wish her well. <laughs> yes. And let's, and let's yes. very clearly state that we wish her well. Okay. We wish her well. <laughs> Putting that out there into the world. (laughs) Yes, please let it be said. We want Mm -hmm. Nikki to be to be good, to Mm -hmm. to to be loved. For sure. (laughs) (laughs) To be well. We want her in a good space. We do. That's it for this week, everyone. Be sure to follow us on TikTok at Two Queens Two Crowns and to check out the podcast on YouTube, Two Queens Two Crowns. Erica, and I would also love for you to follow us on our personal socials. I'm on TikTok at I am underscore KJ Miller and YouTube with the handle I am KJ Miller. And Erica's on IG at Letta Bino and TikTok at Letta Bitch Know. We'll see you next week.